So this one, I'm actually going to ask you to write this up in your book because we're going to use it in a second. And I actually need you to have it in your book because you're going to do something physical to it in a second. Let's just get these numbers down. And as you do so, I'm going to talk through what it is you're looking at. This is another way to represent a set of scores, just like a dot plot, same idea, but it just gives us a finer sense of detail. Okay? So the idea here is that you look together at the stem and the leaf, and you read them simultaneously to get the score. So let's look at the very first one. The stem starts with a 1, and then the leaf is a 0. So I put a 1 and a 0 together, what number is that? That looks to me oh, like ten. Ten. 10. So, yeah, it's a bit sneaky. These are actually um, tens digits, and these are all units. Okay? Um, you can see just below here, there's 10, 11, 12. But when you put a 10 together with a 0, if you wrote them in sequence, what's a 1, 0, 0? That's going to be okay. 100. 100, very good. 100, and then 101, 101 again. You, got, you can have lots of people having the same score, and 102, and so on. Okay. Let me just come back to A because this is the one that you're drawing, writing in your own book. You can see here, I can do the same calculations I did before, um, range and medium and mode. I can do all of them on this as well. Okay, So let's do range first because we were just recently calculating that. What's the top score here? What's the very highest line you can see? Yeah, it's going to be that 4 and the 9 together. So 49. So 49, that's my top. I'm going to subtract my lowest score, okay. which is just 10. So my range in this case will be 49 take away 10. That's going to be 39. 39. Very good. Um, mode, we know how to find that. That's the most common, the most frequent score. How look? Which one comes up the most often? Three. Anybody, what do you say? 33. So I see a whole lot of threes here, but I've just got to pay attention to the fact that all of these leaves, it's an agricultural metaphor, right? All of these leaves attach to this stem. So that's why I'm not reading it as 23 or 43, it's 33. Okay. So we looked at the range, we looked at the mode. The other thing, which is the trickiest and most time consuming to find, is the median. So to find the median, we're either going to cross off stuff, or either going to do that, or we're going to count them up. Okay? Let me cross things off, and I actually want you to look closely at how I'm about to do this. Just put your pens down for a minute. It's okay if you're not finished. I'm just going to do a cross off, but I want you to wonder with me why what I'm about to do is wrong. Uh, and I'm showing it to you because so many students do it. Watch carefully with me. I'm going to cross off from the top and then the bottom, the top and then the bottom, the top and then the bottom. Now I'm not finished yet, I'm not finished yet, but can someone tell me what's problematic about this particular way about going through? I'm not going to find the median if I do this. Yeah, hit pause here because you've, you've given me a few really good thoughts today. Krishan, do you want to jump in? What do you think? Um, so, since you're supposed to go from the bottom to the top and from the top to the bottom when crossing, but when you've gone from left to right from the bottom, it's gone downwards. Okay, so if you didn't quite hear what Krishan said the first time, right? I've got to get the biggest values from the top, and then I've got to get the smallest values from the bottom. Do you agree with that? Now, if you have a look at this moment right here, that one right there. Right. Have I crossed off the top two values? Yeah. Look carefully. Have I crossed off the top two values? Yeah. I have, haven't I? You told me the top was 49. Yeah. The next one after that was 45. Yeah, thumbs up. Mm -hmm. But have I crossed off the two bottom values? No. The answer is no, because I started looking from the top of here and I went down. So I actually should start from the left going to the right. So if I were to fix this, it should look like... Now, do you agree? Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that far. Do you agree I've now got the bottom two crossed out? Is that okay? And I could keep on going. Can we maybe do this together and you can help me work out if I get it right? Bottom, top. Bottom, top. So far, so good? Bottom, top. Bottom, top. Bottom, top. No. Yes? Yeah. Those are all the same. That's a bit funny. Bottom, top. Am I done? Yes. Yeah? So I found, I think that, which we also found was the mode, that should be the median, 33. So far, so good? Okay, one last thing before I set you to work um, interpreting and reading these. One of the reasons why, sorry, I'm just losing. One of the reasons why, thank you. Um, 
One of the reasons why we, you might think, why did we introduce these two things together, like dot plots and stem and leaf plots? I used to think that because I didn't realize um, how much they had in common. So I prepared one beforehand. You don't need this. This, thank you. Um, this is a stem and leaf plot, just like the one you saw before, right? So you can see here. Um, I've got a stem of zero, so that might be, that's my tens unit, so this would just be a seven by itself. Um, I'd have 20, 21, 21 again, and so on, okay? The reason why we look at these two things together, stem and leaf plots and dot plots, is they're actually kind of, if you look at them the right way, and this, by the way, is why I asked you to draw this in your book. Can you take your book and do what I'm about to do? Can you please turn it 90 degrees to the left? Now, this is why you had to do it in your book, you couldn't have it with a laptop, right? Have a look at what you've got, have a look at what I've got. Does this look familiar? This is a dot plot just with extra details filled in, right? And we can count through it exactly the same way that you counted through it before. Does that make sense? So in fact, if you look at it from the right angle, dot plots and the stem and leaf plots, they're really kind of just the same thing looked at from a different point of view, with different levels of detail. All right, does anyone have any questions on any of those concepts? Mrs. Lee. I'm going to put my two sets in, Please. which flows in really nicely with this. What does that also look like? Column graphs. Column graphs, doesn't it? And that's not a coincidence. So when you're doing these, especially if you struggle with being super neat, notice when Mr. Wu wrote, drew up his stem and leaf plot, all the first leaves are together. All the second leaves are together. That's not a coincidence. If you draw them up fairly easily, you have another special type of display, which is not quite a column graph, but for now we'll call it that until we get some more words in a couple of lessons time. But being neat and making sure they all line up, whether they be dots or numbers, is actually really helpful for you. Mrs. Lee did point this out. You can see my ones, right? See my ones, how they're kind of conspicuously spaced out, even though normally if you write ones, you can write them really close together. The reason why I had to space them out is because I had to leave space for other numbers. So my three and my eight are directly beneath those ones, and my zero and my five are directly beneath those ones. So that's why I very deliberately spaced it out. And the textbook will do the same thing for you, okay?